good afternoon to Growing for Good with Funding for Good. My name is Mandy Pierce, owner of Funding for Good, and we're checking in today from the home offices here in Hickory, North Carolina. I want to talk to you today about segmenting your direct mail. A lot of people have either never done direct mail or they've started direct mail and they're kind of new at it. And I just want to give you some tips for ways that you can eventually grow your direct mail impact and touch the people that are currently contributing to your organization. For those of you that are completely new to direct mail, it is a way to reach a lot of people. You can do acquisition mailings where you purchase a list and target people who might be interested in your particular type of work, your organization, your mission, and you can target them by demographics, age, income, habits, where they've given before, those types of things. If you're doing direct mail and you're doing the same thing every time you send a direct mail appeal, more than likely you are printing your database on labels or you're paying a company to do that for you if you're doing an acquisition mailing you're purchasing a large list probably around 5,000 names and then you're sending the exact same letter out to everyone every time you send a mailing with the same kind of reply card with the same request some things that folks do to increase the success rate of their direct mail and to make it more personal for your donors is to segment your direct mail pieces when you have the ability to segment your direct mail based on current donors, new donors, acquisition donors, lapsed donors that you're trying to re-engage, or even segmenting them by their giving history. You might be sending a particular letter with a particular type of request to folks who have given uh, between $25 and $200 in the hopes of asking them to increase their gift by $25, $50, $100. So their reply card is going to look different. They're going to have different levels of giving on the reply card. Their letter is going to be different. And if you have the ability, you can even merge in your letter. Thank you for your, your most recent gift of, fill in the blank, with the amount that they gave recently. Or thank you for your generous support of our organization for the past X number of years. So if you have that type of data and you can run it in an Excel and then send it to the person that's helping you with your direct mail, you should be able to merge those pieces together, which creates a more personalized experience for the donor that's getting that letter. Additionally, having two or three different types of letters that are going out, if it's a new donor, telling them a little bit about the history of your organization, getting them a little bit more engaged, maybe at the end following up with ways they can become involved in the organization, if it's a volunteer opportunity, if it is serving on a committee, if it's participating in an event, is great. But for folks who've been involved in your organization for five, 10, 15 or more years, they don't need to know that history, they already know it. In fact, I talked with someone recently who was annoyed because they get the exact same letter that every other donor gets at an organization that they helped found. So you have a founder of an organization getting this letter like, hey, let me tell you about our organization and how we got started and what we're doing. And, and they're like, okay, this is obviously not sent to me. It's sent to everyone, the exact same message comes, the same reply card. They're not acknowledging that person's specific history of giving. So I encourage you, whenever you have the capacity to do that, to start segmenting your direct mail. I think that if you measure, you will see a much greater return on investment for the individuals that are giving to you, a potential increase in the amount they're giving, and definitely an increase in their interest in your organization because you're showing an interest in them as a donor.